On April 10, 1912, a ship set off for a journey that would change the lives of its passengers forever. The voyage began in Southampton, England and stopped at France and Ireland before continuing on to the final destination of New York City. However, only 715 people survived the trip. You may have heard stories of this ill-fated ship, a ship that was officially named the RMS Titanic but is better known today simply as the Titanic. This was the Titanic's very first journey, referred to as its maiden voyage. The boat was 882 feet long, almost the length of three football fields. The widest point was 92.5 feet. A 1910 brochure advertising the maiden voyages of the Titanic in a similar ship called the Olympic said that, as far as it is possible to do so, these two wonderful vessels are designed to be unsinkable. The Titanic was designed so that four of its 16 compartments could be flooded without endangering its buoyancy. The myth of its unsinkability grew, and many passengers believed that the ship could not sink. The ship was extravagantly furnished with a hospital, swimming pool, and even a squash court. First class passengers had an 11 course dinner on the final night before the sinking, while third class passengers had much poorer conditions. For example, more than 700 third class passengers shared two bathtubs, one for men and one for women. Contrary to people's expectations and the reputation of the ship, the Titanic did sink. It struck an iceberg on the night of April 14th, four days into the journey, and a 300-foot gash was created on the side of the boat. First Officer William Murdoch ordered the engines to be reversed and the ship to be turned when the iceberg was sighted. Experts believe that this actually made the crash more severe. The Titanic probably would have been able to survive a head-on collision. Five of the watertight compartments were ruptured in the front, which caused the bow to sink and water to spill over into the remaining compartments. Crewmen tried to figure out how to save as many people as possible with approximately 20 lifeboats at their disposal. Ironically, there was a scheduled lifeboat drill for earlier that morning, but it had been cancelled. Each lifeboat could hold 40 to 65 passengers, but with all the chaos and frantic passengers, some of the boats were not filled to capacity. The majority of the survivors were women and first-class passengers. At this time, there was a law in place that women and children had to be rescued first at sea. For the most part, this rule was followed, and the majority of the lives lost were men. However, some women refused to leave their husbands and sons. In addition, there were a few reasons why the third-class passengers were disproportionately lost at sea. Captain Edward John Smith failed to sound a general alarm so many of the third-class passengers on the lower decks were not warned in time. Also, navigating from the lower deck to the upper deck, where the lifeboats were stored, took a considerable amount of time and caused many of these passengers to miss the departure of the lifeboats. Only 174 out of 710 third-class passengers survived. Fast forward to 73 years later. In September of 1985, the Titanic was finally located. There have been a few excavation efforts so far, but because it lies in international waters, they have not been regulated very well. The Titanic remains a source of intrigue and mystery to this day, and much remains to be discovered as archaeologists look deeper into understanding the artifacts left behind in the wreck. <laughs>